In today's video, I'm going to show you how to import photos into Lightroom. And this is very easy to do. I'm going to show you just by jumping right in. At the moment, we're in the library module, but when I click the import button, this little dialog pops up. And what I'm going to do first is simply import some photos that are already on my hard drive. Specifically, they're in this folder right here, Photos 2020-03 March. And when I click on it, I can see the photos that I'm interested in importing. Now, interestingly, if I were to click that folder one level higher, this 2020 folder, I still see all of the photos, and that's because I have this Include Subfolders option checked. If I uncheck it, I only see the photos within the folder that I've actually clicked on. So right now, on my hard drive, all my photos are stored in this 03 March folder. None of them are actually in the main 2020 folder itself. So you can either include subfolders or not. I tend to leave it switched on. That's a personal choice. Let's go to 03 March. Now right now, what I want to do is take all of these photos, leave them in the same folder on my hard drive, and simply add them to my Lightroom catalog. Now there's actually an option called just that. It says add at the top. Now this top dialog is really important. Uh, the left hand dialog, all that it really does is tell you where your photos are going to be imported from. The top dialog though lets you specify how they're going to be imported. Uh, specifically right now it says add, but the other options are move, copy, and copy as DNG. Now add simply adds those photos to your Lightroom catalog without moving where they are on your hard drive. Right now that's exactly what I want because I'm happy with that 03 March folder. But if I want to move their location from one spot on my hard drive to another, this move button is what you want to click instead. And you can see that when I do, a couple new options pop up, including this destination section. And that just tells Lightroom where to put your photos before adding them to the catalog. Now, one thing that I do want to emphasize about this move option is that it really does move your photos. Basically, Lightroom copies them and deletes the original. So if you want your photo in both places at once, move is not the one that you should select. Instead, you should pick this option that says copy. Now, when you click the word copy, you still have the same destination options at the bottom right. But the difference here is that Lightroom doesn't actually remove that first copy of your photo. So now you have two different copies in two locations. And personally, I use this actually quite a bit when I'm importing photos from my memory card. And the reason is, I don't really want Lightroom to be the one to clear out that memory card when I import photos. I'd much rather keep a second copy on my card, even just as a backup, and then only format my card when I'm ready to clear out those pictures. So now let's take a look at the final option up here. You can see it says copy as DNG. Now this is exactly the same as copy, except that Lightroom's going to convert your photo to a DNG file. Now, DNG is Adobe's raw file type, kind of like the ones from Nikon, Canon, and Sony. And DNGs have a couple of benefits. They're meant to be a little bit smaller than the raw files from the camera manufacturers. And it's also an open file type. So in theory, it's a little bit more future-proof. However, the big reason that I don't convert my photos to DNG is that you can't convert them back. It's very easy to go from the raw file to a DNG. Adobe even has a DNG converter that you can download for free but you just can't go the other way. And that can be a problem. Maybe in the future, Nikon releases some software that can't read DNG files and requires the original Nikon NEF files. In that case, you're kind of stuck if you only converted your photos to DNG. So personally, when I want to copy photos, I just click copy. I don't click copy as DNG. But in this case, I don't want to copy my photos. I want to add them. And that's because I'm happy with how this 03 March folder is structured. Now, when I click that add button, I've got a couple of new options that pop up on the right hand side. This first one is file handling. Now this option right here that says build previews, this is the thing that I was talking about in the previous video. Lightroom builds these previews of your photos that you can see when you're scrolling through the library module. And the higher resolution the preview, the easier it is to zoom in on that photo, but also the more space that it takes up. And so personally, I just leave this as standard. That's good enough to be able to tell whether my photo looks good or not. And then if I really want a better preview, you just zoom in and Lightroom builds a one-to-one -one preview automatically. This next option is build smart previews. Those take up a pretty significant amount of space. So I never build the smart previews, um, but that's a pretty complex topic in its own right. And I'm gonna talk about that in a later video. Now this don't import suspected duplicates option that is one that I definitely recommend checking. That way, when you're importing photos into Lightroom, Lightroom can just make sure that you haven't imported those photos already. Um, this make a second copy option, that'll pop up later when I click copy. This add to collection option, uh, collections are a very good way to organize photos within Lightroom's library module. You can kind of create a collection based off your best photos or photos that you want to export, anything like that. 
In this case, I'm not going to though. I can always add those photos to a collection later. Now the next option down says apply during import and these are very important. You've got develop settings and metadata. Now develop settings literally lets you apply certain post-processing settings to every single photo that you import at a particular time. And this can be very useful. Maybe you have one particular sharpening or noise reduction setting that you want every single imported photo to have by default. This is where you can do it. Um, at the moment, I've got none selected. Later on in this video course, I'm going to show you how to create develop presets in general, and any develop preset that you create, you can select here. For example, in the past, I've created some user presets. I've got one Lightroom import preset that I used to use, uh, some dehaze presets, various things like that. The next option down is metadata, and the metadata is pretty much exactly the same thing. It's another type of preset, except in this case, you get to change your photo's metadata settings. So if I create a new one, you can see just how many options you have at your disposal. Now you can change any of these fields and have that apply to every single photo that you've imported right here. Uh, the most important, of course, is copyright. So I'm going to do copyright Spencer Cox, and I'm going to do copyright status as copyrighted. And once those are done, I'm going to title this one uh, LR Video Copyright. And when I click Create, you can see that now shows up as my metadata preset. Now the final option down is this keyword section. And if I add any keywords here, they're going to apply to every single one of my photos. Now, of course, keywords are a pretty good way to find your pictures. Uh, maybe you went to the beach, then you're able to create a keyword for all of your photos that just says beach. In this case, I don't really need to add any keywords here, so I'm gonna leave that field blank. And then the one section that I haven't really talked about is this huge one right here where all of my photos appear. I've kind of glossed over it, but this is actually quite important. For example, if there's any of these that I don't want to import, maybe this photo, I just uncheck that box and now you can see it's kind of darkened. That photo is not going to be imported by Lightroom. And if it's the alternative and you only want to import a couple photos, you can click uncheck all and then go to the three or four photos that you do want to import, maybe just a few like that. And once I've done that, only those photos are actually going to be added to my Lightroom catalog. Any of the other pictures in this folder are going to stay where they are on the hard drive, but they won't show up in Lightroom. So, in this case, I certainly do want to check all the photos, so I click check all. Now, the last thing that I want to draw your attention to is this section at the bottom that says import preset. Now, if I click it, I can see all of the import presets that I've created in the past, and I also have the option to save my current settings as a new preset. And when I do that, just the naming dialog pops up. Now, essentially, this takes all the settings that I've just selected, everything from my metadata to my post-processing presets, and the spot where I want my photos to be imported, and it saves those so that I can apply that to any future imports that I want. Now, you might not always wanna do this. In this case, I don't, just because I'm only doing this as a quick demonstration, but if you do create that, you'll be able to apply that import preset to any photos that you import in the future. So now let's actually click the import button, now that I've set all my settings properly, and we'll just wait a moment for those photos to appear in Lightroom. Now, when they do, one thing that you might notice is how the color changes after just a moment. And there it goes. So if you noticed, what happened is that Lightroom initially showed me one preview for the photo, it had certain colors, and then after a moment, it started showing me a different preview and the colors shifted. And what happened was at first, Lightroom was showing me the JPEG preview, the one that was baked into that raw file, and then after a moment, Lightroom reinterpreted the raw file for itself and shifted those colors. So the actual photo was not edited in any way. All that happened is that Lightroom changed the preview of it in the library module. So I'm gonna go back to the grid view by hitting the letter G on my keyboard, and you can see all these photos have now been imported and they're looking pretty good. Over on the left-hand side, all the pictures are in that 03 March folder just as they should be. So this is a success. I've imported all those photos into Lightroom properly. But the one thing that I haven't yet done is import photos from a memory card. And of course, this is how most people are going to import their photos into Lightroom. So let's do that right here. Uh, when I plug the memory card into my computer, you can see that the import dialog actually pops up automatically. And this is pretty interesting. Lightroom was able to tell that I plugged a memory card into my computer, and so it pops this up. The one issue is sometimes when you plug in a memory card or a thumb drive, you don't actually want Lightroom to pop up automatically. Uh, so I actually prefer to turn this option off before I import these photos. I'm gonna click Cancel, go up into Lightroom Classic, Preferences, and then Show Import Dialog when a memory card is detected. I'm gonna uncheck that. So this way, whenever you plug in a memory card, you just have to manually click that import button at the bottom of Lightroom. So I'm gonna do that right now, 
And Lightroom still knows that it's this SD card that I've selected. You can see it says Nikon D780 on the left hand side. Now in the center, I've got all these photos from a macro photo shoot that I did this morning. And on the right hand side, I have very similar options, but a couple more because right now Lightroom has automatically selected copy from the top. And as I said earlier, copy is what I want when I'm importing photos from a memory card. And in fact, right now Lightroom isn't even letting me select move or as. So it knows, it knows that it doesn't want to be the one that deletes those photos from my card. So let's go over to the right hand side. Uh, there's a few interesting options that are selected. Now the first one is this file handling thing now has the ability to make a second copy of these photos. I see no reason to do that right now. They're going to be on my memory card. They're going to be on my hard drive. Uh, but if you do want an immediate backup of your raw photos, that's where you'd be able to do it. Now file renaming. This is a new section. I have the ability to rename files. And this is actually something that I recommend doing just because those standard file names on your camera, like DSC underscore one, two, three, four, those are very common file names. You've probably got multiple photos with that file name. And if you ever put those photos in the same folder, it can actually be really easy to overwrite one of them with the other. So instead, I suggest making your file name something that cannot be repeated. In this case, I actually have a template that's called unrepeatable. Uh, and I'll show you what that is. Once I click on unrepeatable, I can just click edit. And this whole thing is your file name template editor. You can see at the top, Lightroom allows you to select your file names upon import and name them anything that you want. Uh, the crazy unrepeatable template that I've got is the date, the Julian day of the year, the hour, the minute, and the file name. It is physically impossible now for me to have two different photos with the same file name. And that just gives me a little bit of peace of mind. Now, you don't need to go quite this crazy, but I do recommend adding a little bit of complexity to your file names so that they're unlikely to be repeated. Now, after that's done, I can just click done. And the next section, extensions, that's really not important. That's just whether NEF is capitalized or lowercase. Scroll down through apply during import because those are gonna be the same. Now, I do have this new destinations option. And allow me to actually go to the photos section on my laptop. And this is the 2020-03 March folder. Now, right now, I actually took these photos in April. So I'm going to create a new folder. I just right click on 2020, create new folder, and then this dialog pops up. You can see it's got my 03 March folder, but if I click new folder, I'm gonna name it 04 April. And when I create that and click choose, it now shows up in my destination section in Lightroom. And the 04 April folder is the one that I wanna to import to. I just click import. And again, it'll take a moment, but those photos are gonna start showing up in Lightroom. So that's exactly what I want. I've now imported all of my photos from both the memory card and my hard drive. Even my cat is very happy that I did because now I can feed him and play with him. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.